begging woman. The New York man, that was big, I didn't bother to be, every time he opened his mouth, he begged for something. So I thought I'd write something about that. Got a begging woman. She's always begging me. Woman leaving bed. A possum out of tree. You know she's a begging woman. And I can see it in her eyes. Got a hand full of gimme and love, and they mouth full of much of lies. She beg Aunt Jane, and she beg Uncle Jake. She leave them beg the sweetness. A ginger cake, you know, she's a begging woman. Lord, I can see it in her eyes. She's got a handful of gimme. Lord, and a mouth full of much blood. in the mornings and she sleeps all afternoons she stays up all night long to beg the man in the moon you know she's a begging woman ooh Lord and I can see it in her eyes Got a handful of gimme And a mouth full of much you blind I got problems. I've been having problems all my day. Still having problems. And this is the only way I can I can explain it to you. Number two, 
My woman do things for me I know my wife wouldn't do But where I made the humbug When I grabbed that number three She went on and told my wife Everything about my woman and me So my wife got mad and packed the rags And she went back home to mother And my woman, she got mad She got herself another lover You know I got problems Problem with my woman and my wife, Lord, Lord. Well, I got the kind of problems that's about to ruin my life. Problem, problem, problem. Cousin Joe Pleasant and Dr. Ross. Welcome to you both to the studio. Thank you, thank you very much. Dr. Ross, uh, how long are you here this time? Well, I'm here from six to seven weeks this time. Six or seven weeks? Right. How, for how long have you been playing music to audiences? Well, actually, I've been playing about 40 years. Where did you begin? Well, I began in New Orleans. You see, I began on uh, in the French quarters, you know. Mm. There's a powerful street called Bourbon Street, you see. It's, it's, it's the street where all the, the tourists come to New Orleans, you know. Mm. And the first place they want to come is the French quarters. And I played different clubs along the street for about 30 years. Mm. Mm. Were you actually recording in those early days? Well, I, I started recording for Decca in uh, in the forties. You know, I stayed in New York for for about two, three years, mm. and I started recording then up until 1947. You see, mm. and I came over here with uh, came over here with a blues package, you know, gospel train, and that was in '64 and. Muddy waters. I haven't been here since. Yes, yeah. Muddy Waters, yes. Mm. And that's the last time you came to Britain? That's, that's the last time, mm. up until now. Mm. Yes. Because, Dr. Ross, you travelled the world as well mm. during oh, the time yes, that you right. were playing. When did you actually start playing? Well, I started actually you know, trying to learn how to play when I was six years old. So now I'm 48 years old, so <laughs> <laughs> been playing 42 years, yeah. you know, since I tried to start. Mm. But I, I just love it. I just love playing. And of course, uh, playing uh, is in my family from my father on to his father, just mm. in the family. Mm. And uh, I also will have a new al album record coming out. The name is going to be Dr. Ross, the Harmonica Boss. It's supposed <laughs> to be released around the first day uh, of next month, March. And uh, it's on Big Bear, Jim Simpson. Mm -hmm. My man is on his label. And he's very, very nice, you know. Right. Yeah. How much has the uh, sort of circumstances under which you record changed during the past few years? I mean, did, did rock and roll change your situation in the studio very much when it emerged? Well, no, I wouldn't say that. It, uh, it, it, according to my estimation, you know, this type of... The blues is actually the foundation of all the music. Mm. You understand? Mm. But I like all types of music. But you see, this type of music will never go out of style. Mm. The blues. They will be playing the blues for the next thousand years. <laughs> the masturbation, you know. So in other words, then, the way that you actually record the things that you do yes. hasn't really altered very much at all. Well, no, it uh, it uh, it uh, it's uh, you know something like uh, it's traditional rather the blues is you know what I mean, mm. and uh, I've always stayed in the same groove all the time, mm. you see, and 
quite natural, you know, uh, during the years. You understand, like during the, the, the jazz area, Benny Goodman, and then after that, in the 40s, was the, was the uh, modern jazz, you know. But the, but the blues has come back very strong now, I think. Mm. Mm. Is there very much difference between the audiences that you play to in America and the audiences that you play to here? Yeah, it's quite a bit uh, difficult. They, they seem like the blues is here to stay now, but they're in the States there are so many different types jazz and uh, blues and rock and stuff like that. Seems like it's got the most teenagers kind of stood up. They're confused about, you know, what's going on. But uh, we got the blues going pretty strong in some of the states, just like it is here. And we want to always get it out over here because we get the greatest support from here and we'll do that. Mm. But the blues is back because that's something I never die, you know. Mm. It's just like an old soldier, he never died. Uh, he just faded away. <laughs> so the blues is back. And I'm surprised that uh, it, it's going to, and sure enough, going to bring him on back when this new album comes out about me first and next month. <laughs> so going to go for that. I like it better here, you know, because everybody's the same as one here. We don't get the right uh, treatment that we should get over in, in America. But here, everybody, you know, seems to go for us, and and uh, I'm proud of it, you know. In, in what way don't you get the right treatment in America? Well, uh, I didn't, I've been, you know, I've been going, you know, on television, radio, rather, ever since back in, in the 40s. And uh, my first uh, record came out in 1949 as Dr. Ross Boogie. And uh, they kind of messed me up on that. This guy that recorded, he sent them to uh, Chicago to Chiss label, and I never got a pen out of it, you know. Because uh, you have recorded songs that have been, oh, oh, uh, yeah. written songs that have been recorded by a lot of other people. Right, Cream. that's right, the Cream, Eric and the Cream, mm. and several other. I have personally have, you know, cut some of mine, also Jerry Lee Lewis. Mm. And uh, things run pretty good that way up until... I said the first portion of the fifties, you know, middle of the fifties, mm. and then uh, it just, they, you know, they seemed like they lift all the black people, you know, and put all the whites in there. But it came from us, us black people. Mm. That's where, you know, all this blues and stuff. That's where it come, because we had it, you know, kind of rough, and out there in them fields, uh, chopping cotton from sun up to sundown, and, and what we'd be <laughs> singing about was trying to. Uh, make ourselves be, you know, pleasing. We we'll get out there and get to singing and and just get that good old rhythm sound there to it, you know. And that's the that's the way it, you know it came up. Just something like, oh, this really just come up like uh, general slavery time, mm. right? When these these cries is going on now, it's leading things right back to <laughs> slavery time. So we got to sing some more, and that's why the blues didn't come back, and Dr. Ross done brought them back. <laughs> So the places that you play in America then, Cousin Joe, are they yes. very different from the places you play here? Very much different. Uh, mm -hmm. To tell you the truth, but over here, the audience is more appreciative. Oh, the beautiful audiences, you know what I mean? It, 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 it just sort of lifts you up, you know, because, you know what I mean? Because it, it, it shows you where the the people appreciate what you're doing, you see. Now, like yeah. in the States, you understand what I mean? You can stand on your eyebrows, man, and ain't nothing going to happen. <laughs> you understand what I mean? <laughs> Unless you're a superstar, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, in, 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 our, in our field, I, I consider ourselves superstars in the blues field, you know what I mean? And and uh, on Fifty Second Street, when I worked along on opposite uh, Ella Fitzgerald and and uh, Billy Holiday and Art Tatum, you know what I mean? I worked at the Downbeat, and uh, I was the only blues singer on the street. It was two, me and Hotless Page, but all the rest 
Dizzy Gillespie and them had just come out with the modern, they called it bebop at that time, you know. <laughs> but now Stan Kenton kind of dressed it up, called it modern jazz, you mm. see. So that was all on street. And I got my first recording date from being on that street through Leonard Feathers, which is from over here, England, see? Cousin Joe, Dr. Ross, thanks very much for coming in to Thank see you. Him.